listening to the Comic Crusaders podcast. I am your host, Al Mega, CEO of Comic Crusaders and Undercover Capes. In this show, I'm sitting down with creators from all walks of life to talk about inspiration, process, the lessons they've learned, and a whole lot more. Well, what I mean, this is your boy, I'm Bugger. Welcome to a brand new Comic Crusaders podcast. And today, I have another awesome, dynamic duo. What? they smashing it in the comic book business. These ladies are just giants right now. Let me introduce, first up, superstar writer of novels and comics, such as Captain Marvel, X-Men, Gem of the Holograms, and now this dope series coming out from Image called Black cloak the one the only Kennedy thompson <laughs> that is a hell of an intro i'm like to bring you with me everywhere yeah, let's go let's go we rocking and we rocking because now we got to bring in your partner in crime for this amazing book man she, she's doing it she's killing it yo she's also a writer but she's best known as an artist man she's also working them with the holograms and adventure time you know that good stuff the one the only meredith McLaren, what up? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? You're I'm a great hype well. man. I, I'm excited here. I got some some awesome ladies that are killing it. Uh, worked on amazing books, and I've had the honor and pleasure, you know, salute to Image Comics, I right, for uh, uh, letting me read the first three issues of this awesome new series, and I'm I'm digging it. As I was telling Kelly, there's so many things going on. We're gonna dig into a little bit as to why people gotta get this book. Before we do that, this is Comic Crusade's podcast, and I need to hear a little bit of an origin story. So since Kelly was first up in the room, <laughs> uh, a little bit about yourself, where you're from, OG, uh, Kelly, and, and what was your first taste of fandom? Ha. Uh, so I'm originally from California, um, Northern California, sort of, um, although I've spent more time in my life in Southern California. I live in Portland, Oregon now. Uh, I got into comics. I mean, I think Archie comics were really my first comics that like I would get from the grocery store begging my mom for new Archie comics and her she's like don't you already have that one I'm like absolutely not so I was crazed I was crazed from the jump but I didn't really discover the full world of comics like in comic stores and monthly polls and the whole fandom as a thing until I was a teenager and that primarily came through uh you know X-Men the animated series I got hip to it because of that and then it just sort of blew those doors open and it was like the second I sort of discovered that again or rediscovered it as a teen i was like i knew that that was for me uh the second coming of comics yeah <laughs> <laughs> a little yeah. bit awesome awesome all right miss mclaren the floor is yours what about you where your og from and your first taste Love. uh i'm i'm originally from all over the west coast uh started all alaska. over <laughs> <laughs> yeah started in alaska went to california hawaii but i've spent most of my time in arizona oh. uh uh and i got into comics with uh sailor moon nice oh, sailor moon. Yeah. okay yeah yeah, yeah. Cool, cool cool like oh oh this thing that i can read every month <laughs> and it's beautiful <laughs> when did you discover that was it like a shop or you know what was that experience it was a birthday gift from somebody um oh, cool. Wow, what an incredible that's coolest, gift. That's yes. the coolest person that, yeah. that your family yeah. knew. <laughs> I mean, that person like literally changed the course of your destiny. Are they aware of that? Because that's awesome. I should yeah, probably yeah. tell them it's something. <laughs> <laughs> By well, the way. maybe not, because, uh, you know, it's also hard to be a comic artist. So you're like, hey, listen, the glory <laughs> and the pain is all your fault. <laughs> yes, it lies solely with you. Well, I'm digging it, I'm digging it, I'm digging it. All right, so. You continue, Meredith. I want to ask you then, uh, in that geekdom as you were growing up, were you did you have a tribe? Were you uh, a lone wolf? Um, I had a little a little group of friends, and we were all you know little anime nerds together. Anime okay. monk nerds. <laughs> excellent, excellent. What about you, Kelly? Did you have a tribe growing up, or you were a dolo? No. I was Lone Wolf. I was Lone Wolf. Um, I, I, when I rediscovered comics, uh, I guess I wasn't a Lone Wolf in the sense I had my brother. He was really into it. So we were able to share that together. But I didn't have any friends that were into comics. And I was growing up in Utah at that time, which was really conservative. And I was really sort of 
bristling against it, like bristling against it. I didn't like it, but I was lucky in addition to having my brother, Scott, who was really into it. Uh, I had a really good comic shop. You know, if I had had, that was actually run by a woman. Um, oh, cool. It was night flight comics when I was there. They, they're not where they now they're still open, I believe, but they're not where they were when I was a kid. But I do think that if I had had, you know, a lot of people tell stories about bad comic shops, and oh, bad, yeah. bad experiences. And I think if I had had a bad experience, it probably would have really changed the course for me. So I always feel very lucky that I, I had really great shops who were happy to have me as a customer. They were excited about me being there and no one ever tried to Ooh. keep me out, you know, and I, I think there was a there was a real chance that I could have been scared away from it because, you know, I'm like a kid on my own in Utah. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, you know, so, <laughs> so them being interested in me being there made all the difference really. Absolutely. And I would tell any shop that that's, there's, there's hundreds, if not thousands of Kelly's out there that, you know, want to give you their money, just, you know, yeah. embrace them. Just be nice. Be nice. Yeah. So what about my well, too, Meredith, you had any cool comic shots by you going I did. On? Uh, I actually ended up working for them for a little while. Oh, you I, did? Um, <laughs> I love yeah. them so much. I, I want to work for you. I wanted a job at mine so bad. That was for sure my dream job. But it was like every <laughs> nerd's dream job. So Absolutely, I knew I wasn't yeah. going to get it. <laughs> uh, uh, the shine dims a little bit from the other side of the counter. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. <laughs> um, but I was, I was really lucky. The owners were both very nice and uh, they, you know, it wasn't even sort of like a gentle ushering into anime. It was like one of them was just like, here, you need to watch all of this. <laughs> <laughs> just Do some homework. Full form, yeah. yeah, pretty <laughs> much. It. Love it, love it, love it. All right, Kelly, uh, going to you, when did you decide to start getting creative with you, with the fandom? You know, when did that happen? What was the spark? Uh, well, I always wanted to be a writer since I was really little. So, and awesome. then when I discovered comics, I rediscovered them and realized that that was a real medium that I really was passionate about and that I thought maybe I could really do. Um, so that was when I was a teen. And then I actually went to school. I went to uh, U of A for a couple of years to study graphic design. Oh, but cool. then but then I transferred to SCAD, which is Savannah College of Art and Design, because they had a sequential art program. And so that's where I graduated mm. from. And then like most graduates, I sort of went off into the real world and didn't do anything with my degree. And, you know, I was just <laughs> sort of working in my spare time, writing, drawing, mostly writing, trying to make it go. I mean, I was always determined I was going to do it, but I'm a little slow. So it took me a while. It took yeah. me a while to get it up and running, but here we are. We made it. <laughs> wasn't, yeah. it through a, wasn't it through a competition or something, mm. or something? No, no, I didn't do any okay. competitions. No, I also, either. I also had a terrible um, situation where the first right piece of writing I ever submitted to anything got accepted and published, which is a terrible thing to happen because <laughs> it's a terrible bar to set. That is not how it works. <laughs> do not get used to that. You gotta fail. Like, you gotta fail like fifty times first. So wait, uh, <laughs> did you fail fifty times after the fact? After that Pro first, probably, one? probably, oh, man. maybe, maybe not, but probably. Um, well, yeah, well, no, that's I, pretty I, dope, I, though. I mean, uh, the, wouldn't it still at least? I mean, what you're saying is don't don't let it get to your head, but it doesn't still confidence. Like, okay, I'm good enough to get published. Yeah. I mean, listen. Take every compliment, every <laughs> compliment that you feel like is genuine. That's a and take it and live with it and feel glad for having it and like then move on because you can't hold on to any of it too much or you go crazy. Um, you can't hold on to the bad or the good because you know you start. It's I I think this is probably almost as bad as letting you know someone the internet or trolls or whatever uh, yeah. get to you is believing your own hype is so dangerous you know so you got to keep yourself grounded keep moving work with great people yeah that's how it works yeah. that's how you don't wait we're gonna get into the bromance in a bit about how you guys <laughs> hooked up i don't know about that but about you Meredith, when did your creative spark kind of start uh i was always drawing um but for a while, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go into animation. And then uh, I started studying it and realized I got bored very quickly drawing the same picture <laughs> 30 times over. Um, and then also the, the building that the animation department was in was like low-key soul-crushing. 
<laughs> oh. They were preparing uh, you for the real world. <laughs> it, okay, so the building was also the building where the majors for video games and special effects were. So it's just all computers. So it's super cold because yeah. it's got all the, the hard yeah. drives going. Yeah. And it had no windows. Oh. Uh, yeah, it was just, I couldn't do it anymore. Like, am I in class or lockdown? Yeah. I mean, that really is terrible. I think Al's right. Like, they're like, well, we'll just, it's awful out there. So we'll just <laughs> let them know from the jump before they even get out there that it's terrible. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, they're prepping you. This is the oh. shit you're going to be working in. <laughs> but it's like I you were an yeah. astronaut. And they're like, yeah, exactly. no, just shoot her into space. Let her see how it's going to be. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but I also, I also really love comic books. And I was double majoring because I'm like, animation will be the main thing, but I'll do comics. And then I'm like, nope, comics so is going to be the whole thing. How do you make comics? I'm so jealous. Like, really, when I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 47. And yeah. I, when I was growing up, Colleges weren't offering no type no. of sequential, none of that stuff. No, and I, I'm i also a SCAD kid, and uh, that was specifically because I think at the time they were the only ones offering a sequential arts program. I think it was like them in like Rhode Island. Yeah, SVA okay. had sequential classes, yeah. but it wasn't the same it wasn't yeah. as much stuff there weren't like writing classes and things like it was it was more focused on the art whereas sequential art at scad felt more like all of it although nobody taught me how to letter which i wish yeah. they taught me so i yeah. mean it's and, sort of did, but and you can always you could always before that you could always get a degree that would launch you into comics it's just you had to be more creative about it it had to be like graphic design or yeah illustration or something like that yeah yeah okay okay there we go there we go all right so well what, what was your, your first like real professional woman that you landed and how did that feel when you like did sign the first time that they said yes um my first one was hopeless savages volume four written by the lovely jen van meter um Ooh. yes which was a book i uh, had read growing up and so I'm like this is awesome I know what this is it's like this, <laughs> this has prestige nice. attached to it already um and so I was really so you get it spoiled that. on the first try you see folks <laughs> yeah yeah um, I think I had applied to a bunch of other places before that uh but also oh, okay. uh with Oni uh I had pretty much physically planted myself in front of their offices, <laughs> which is not something I would advise you to do. Uh, so I, I didn't really give them a lot of choice in whether or not they could hire me. I'm not leaving until you give me a darn job. I am Come hearing on. this for the first time, but I'm, I'm very glad you forced them because it was the right thing. Yeah. Force is a strong word, but yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, no, I showed Use up. the force. Yeah, I kind of yeah. showed up out of the blue. So, <laughs> if we don't adopt this this artist, uh, this wayward child, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's gonna happen to her? And again, I would not advise this for future people. Yeah, you can, not you advise. Can get blacklisted. Yeah, yeah, you need like a little flashing sign. Do not try this at home. Yeah. <laughs> Watch it, folks. Watch it, folks. All right. But how, how did that feel? You got that. I mean, you know, were you excited? Uh, oh, what, yeah. What, no, what, I was. What, what is as glamorous as you thought it was, that first project? <laughs> I. I. Mm, is glamorous was... a word we use? <laughs> I don't know about that. I was excited to learn what I learned during the process of making that comic. And, like, I still think of it very fondly because. Like it was a really nice launching out off place. Jennifer Excellent. was so lovely, and um, she's amazing. Yeah, and and then also, uh, it did sort of take a while that one longer than it should have, uh, and so <laughs> uh, that also prepared me for the industry. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say even on Hopeless Savage, was that like a was that like a living wage when you were doing hopeless savages oh no yeah i was gonna say that seems unlikely <laughs> uh yeah and, <laughs> same and, as heart in a box no that's just some shekels <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> do not add up to rent <laughs> not at all 
Not even for a day. <laughs> right? no. I should be very clear. I'm only able to do this because I, I, you know, I get to live with my dad and stuff like. Well, so. hopefully, hopefully that's changing. Right. I mean, I yeah. know you've got, I mean, I don't want to step on Al here, but you've got some really cool stuff Absolutely. and I'm not even talking about black cloak. I'm just talking about other stuff you've got lined up. Surely this is opening up a little bit. for you. It right? is. It is definitely opening yeah. up and it's, it's nice because. I want to say from 2018, I, I think it was hard. It was after Heart in a Box or Gem or something where mm-hmm. I had sort of a dry spell. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's scary. it's scary. It is. It's very scary. And then, and then all of a sudden, all these projects opened up. And I was like, it's, it's really a persistence industry. <laughs> It really, you really, you really do. You have to like really stay with it. And there's, you know, I think it's probably true for all freelancers, but comics feels particularly um, dangerous, I think, um, because you really, you really have to, if you're a writer, you have to patch together a couple books in order to make a living wage. And Mm. if you're an artist, you can maybe live on one, but it's got to be a continuous stream or you're in trouble. So, you know, I was just talking to another writer who I consider much more famous than I am. And, you know, they were like, you know, well, I hope I don't have to drive Uber. And I was like, Oh my God. I was like, the fact that he's, they're (laughs) saying this, he's saying this is like, terrifying to me because i think of that person as being much more stable but you know it's a tough industry i i really um i wrote a thing about how to make comics and we called it don't make comics and i just think because (laughs) if you're if you're not fully in it for love of comics if you're trying to use it as a shortcut or anything it's just you have yeah. to love it. It's not worth it otherwise, yeah. to be honest. You're not going to get rich off of this. You know what I mean? It's going to take a most lot of people, work. And, and, you know, yeah, those, those IPs know. that blow up, they're very lucky. You yeah. Know, those, those yeah. Oh, yeah. They're rare. They're rare and they're lucky. And yeah. uh, for most of you, for most of us, it's just a, you know, it's a day job and we're out here, yeah. you know, gutting it out, trying to make it work. Yeah. But so I love as it. As you make it work, let me ask you then there, because, you know, we're going to America. What was your first opportunity like then? that you first landed and then did you have the same journey where you know uh, work and then dry spells is that very typical for you guys so I I can't imagine well my path is a little different you know I moved out to New York and I was just I was working a day job and I tried to I, I started writing I started blogging basically and then that I some people noticed and so comics should be good Brian Cronin he gave me a column over at CBR and so I was writing sort of this op-ed and some people were taking notice because it was about women in comics creators characters the whole thing controversy whatever and um so I started meeting some people. I also launched a review podcast where I was getting to interview a lot of people. And that put me in contact with a lot more creators and a lot more editors. And, you know, I was sort of making friends and all the, all that time I was sort of working on my own projects in the background. And, you know, I, I was really the first thing I did, I did a short for womanthology that was just a four page short and other than that, the first thing I did was Heart in a Box, which Meredith drew, which was published by Dark Horse. Uh, and oh, we oh. just took the regular path you take where you put, to get, you put together a pitch, you submit it, someone says no, someone says yes, and then you start working on it. So that was so, my first project. So that, so that first project is also the origins of the bromance? Are you yes. Telling me? yes. Yes, it is. Weppa, there you yes. go. Sophie Campbell uh, matched us, matchmaker style. Um, I, had, <laughs> I had become friends with Sophie Campbell. I was a huge fan of her work. And we, she was blogging a lot back then. And we just became friends. And she knew I had this project, Heart in a Box. And I was looking for an artist. And she made some recommendations. And I saw Meredith's stuff. And I was like, oh, that's it. Like, if she's into it, that's the match. Oh, and wow. the rest is it um, so how long yeah. ago was that so that was like 20 probably 13 when we started talking 2013 uh, i think heart in a box came out in 2015 so, so it you must started have been. talking in 2013 is it 10 anniversary yeah guys? it is I, know. <laughs> I mean i'd have to check the emails but i think that's probably right right because it took us a while oh i don't know everything's a blur past like two years <laughs> yeah two <laughs> years like, 
anything pre-pandemic doesn't exist now. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's called the blur. That's what we should call that, that era, the blur. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, I brought her in to do an arc on Gem a couple year later nice. or something mm -hmm. like that, and I loved doing that with her. Unfortunately, I both sleep in doing Marvel stuff, and Meredith is a little outside their style parameters for most of their books. Like, occasionally they do cool stuff that's a little more, you know. Come on. Out yeah, I, I, I don't want to call out no artists, but you know, seeing her, I like, come on. I, I, I know she was mastered in Marvel, especially when I saw her in this book. Come on now, <laughs> come on now. I mean, listen, I would have loved to see a Meredith McClure's Captain Marvel run, but they don't. I don't. I don't know. They don't just let you do. I, I, you I don't want to say the name. <laughs> now, I don't know what you mean you know, with the art style, because again, there's the artists you know that they use to see when they even gave that person their own stuff. I mean, come on, yo. I mean, they, they do take chances. And they do. I mean, they do. A this is a beautiful... She is an amazing artist. Oh, I agree. Yo. I agree. Oh, oh well, you know what? I'm going to goddamn start sewing it off because we got to start talking about this book, yo. <laughs> okay. That's it. I'm, they made me angry. How dare Marvel? <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, put it more on me than on Marvel because it's not like I took Meredith's work in and went... <laughs> I I'm walking Iron off Captain lady. Marvel if you guys don't put Meredith on the book. I mean, I just you know they have a house style yeah. and they, oh, they, they do really they do deviate sometimes from it, but it's not yeah. that often. Yeah, I, I, okay, give, give Marvel give her one shot That's <laughs> it, right now. All right, you're gonna see why. I mean, but, all right, we're gonna start talking, kiddos. Talk to me, talk to me. Look at that. We go into talk to me, talk to me about what is. Black Cloak, when do you guys start developing this story? Are we going to start getting into some of the pages? So, I this is an idea I've been working on off and on for probably about 10 years. Uh, it's changed a lot. It especially changed a lot once I got the Substack Pro deal, and I thought that this was probably my project was furthest along. The Substack Pro thing, basically it was grant money, but like we had to start right away. Like, I think I called Meredith and I was like, I'm going to send you some notes and then hopefully in two weeks you'll have a script and you need to start. And she was like, okay. And so, you know, we, we were like sort of shot Not out of so a much. cannon. Yeah. We were sort of <laughs> shot out of a cannon, but uh, so, you know, I think it really started to change when she came on board because that's when you really start to see the magic of applying another vision and voice and talent to a thing you've already been working on and so she just breathes a lot of beautiful magic into it started coming together really fast you mean magic like this yes, <laughs> yes. god yeah. I, love I love that first page so much yeah it, it, and it reminds me so much remember how you, they used to the breakdowns of like the fantastic four buildings and super <laughs> avengers man oh, yeah. i mean that's what this reminds me of we i see this look and angle is so beautiful yo. yeah yeah so, it tells so. you so much about the world just in that single shot i love it oh yeah, yeah especially what what it's about too can you know can you give us yeah. uh, 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 a little brief synopsis of this world y'all yeah, created here because um, as i peruse these wonderful beautiful pages oh you want me to uh, summarize what it's about yeah, yeah, give, give us a little summary because close, folks got to be going to the shops to pick this baby up. <laughs> okay. right? it's, it's coming out next week on the 11th of January, folks. Next week is going to be in shops. So you got you got to pick this up. Real. So show, it's show uh, so Black Cloak is it's a sci fi fantasy hybrid with a detective procedural at the center of it it's open sort of with a murder but it's a whole new world so there's a lot of world building it's got a sort of sci-fi blade runner vibe to it but it's also got some fantasy elements in that you know the creatures you know you've got humans but you've also got elves you've got a ton of new things we created like draconas and death shards and shifters and all sorts of weird things so you know we tried to like give you stuff that feels familiar that's a good touchstone but then we also tried to subvert things and twist them a little bit and make them new and make them our own um and the conceit is basically that you're following these two black cloaks which is what they call basically homicide detectives in this world and law and order is a pretty new concept here but it's like 
uh, they, all this world came together to vanquish the great evil. And then afterwards, a lot of shit was destroyed. And this was one of the only cities left in this giant walled city. So like basically all the creatures of this world are sort of trying to live together in this city. And, uh, you know, it's not, it's not going great. Like, you know, they're having trouble adjusting to, you know, well, that guy stole my chickens and I'm supposed to take him to court instead of do a blood vengeance spell. You know, like they're they're struggling with like this future that's being presented to them. So uh, but the murder that happens in the opening issue is like a big deal. And it's sort of pushing all the sort of class issues and race issues and and sort of pushing it to a boiling point in this city um that's sort of how i describe it yeah, in, in a very nice way but so <laughs> and then your face is fun and, and let me tell you folks again having the play read the three i still don't know what the who the f did this thing because from one <laughs> to the next i'm like yo is this damn no no she she writes these characters that throw some shade and stank that you like ew you know, it, ha it has to be this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really glad to hear you intrigued by the um, the the mystery of it all and the detective yes. stuff because we spend a lot of time talking with people about world building stuff and we love that stuff. But you know, sometimes you're like, oh god, are we not pushing the mystery enough? So it's, I'm glad no, to know. Are. I'm glad I to know it. you're you're curious about it and on the edge of your seat. That feels good. Absolutely, and absolutely. Because again, you know, there's so many. Again, each issue you throw. Because the first issue, folks, you got to get. It's a banger. It's like a double size. It's fifty-one page. page. Fifty-one story pages. Yeah. Yo, on the first issue alone, so you get a wallop for your buck right there, yo. And then you're gonna be hooked like a fish. And when you start getting into this, let me tell you. Well, it's, it's a roller coaster. You're like, who? Not who? Ah, wow! What the fuck's going on? Damn it! <laughs> I can't figure this one out right now. Hold on. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, was that how, how much intent did you put that? That you know to do that? Like, what? What are you a fan of that that made you want to go towards this direction, ladies? Well, I think the simple answer is I'm a fan of sci-fi and detective procedurals a lot. And I really like fantasy stories, but they don't always hit for me. Um, I'm talking more about prose here than comics, I think. But like yeah. pro, I'm not a big fantasy reader in prose. It's, it's a little too purple for me. It's a little too much. I don't care about the plant that you milk from the farthest reaches of space <laughs> that creates the red crimson color of the drapes and the whatever, like, I don't care. So that's not really for me, but like sci-fi is a little more lean for me. Um, as far as a reader, the concepts tend to excite me more, but you know, when I was looking at it, I'm like, why can't I mix these things together and just make them be whatever I want? I'm, we are God. So we just yeah. decide. And as long as, it works and as long as it 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 hangs together correctly then we can do whatever we want and but i do think that meredith is absolutely key in that because not only does she bring all her own ideas and influences and interests to it which i think I think we're a really good fit because I think we're on the same page a lot. And when we're not, it tends to benefit the story rather than hurt it. But I do think that Meredith, her art, like when you're combining three things that could be just separate items, there's a real chance you'd see a lot of seams, you know, to the places where it doesn't fit very well. And I think Meredith is totally the key to nobody feeling those seams like she knows how to draw a mermaid that looks like it belongs with a character that wears a gas mask and a puffy jacket like she just knows how to tie all that together so it all feels like it's from the same world and it's it's uh it's an important thing and she nailed it yeah because yeah, again because it's a story time I mean, look at these beautiful pages here so so much yeah i think i think part of why uh we both enjoy this comic so much is it's just we went what are all the things we like and how can we yeah. put them all in one story like I'm always going you know oh that's cool I have to squeeze that into Black Cloak somehow it's, it's, it's the mashed <laughs> potatoes of comics right here yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> only the good she stuff did. I'm working on the getting her the rest of a script right now and she sent me this design for something just the other day and she was like hey 
this was in my head. Is there maybe a thing that this could be in? And I was like, yes. And like, I <laughs> like immediately wrote it into the script or like, I'll yes. send her, I'll send her like little, you know, like a cute, I sent her those little owlet things. Like I was nice. like, can these be in the book? Like why these seem fantasy? What are they? And she was <laughs> like, yes, I love those. And like, you know, so then we drew our version of them oh, in man. there. And yeah, yeah it's it's really that's fun. what they are. I was trying yeah. to remember that. You see, you see this energy folks this is why you gotta get this book because this is passion and love poured into this project and and i really could tell because i was reading the book and i, I had to read all three not because i was lucky enough folks don't be jealous now. <laughs> you know to read i couldn't put them down like, bah, 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 next. oh man this is dope man i'm mad i gotta i gotta wait several months now for <laughs> number four <laughs> damn it <laughs> all right so you know i mean again look at these Wonderful pages. I mean, you do everything, my way. The coloring, drawing, everything. I mean, what's it all? Is this a team? I mean, what's popping here? Because these, these colors pop, man. Love it. Um, the first couple of pages we did it. It took us a little while because we were trying to find the right, you know, note for as far as colors go. Um, yes. But once once we got a feel for what it, what the other was trying to push like it's become a lot easier as time goes on okay yeah meredith is really smart she'll sometimes send me like if you've got like a five page scene at a new location she'll sometimes like send me a thing and she's like i'm i'm leaning this way for this scene and you know she's almost always right and but she's just very smart because i'm like yes run with it and then she like digs all the way in as opposed to she's like i made this whole scene green and i'm like oh that doesn't work you know <laughs> yeah. so we've, got, we've gotten pretty good at reading each other that nice. way becca uh, meredith does everything on those gorgeous pages except for the lettering which right. is okay. becca, which is becca carey oh wow uh, who's uh, doing, Luke, yeah. Becca. yeah yeah they she's do really amazing. doing Great job. she's really doing an awesome job i think um letterers especially on creator own books um no offense to all the amazing letters i work with on my work for hire stuff but you know on a creator own you're building a world from start and so i've never yeah. really got to have those conversations with a letterer before talking about what it should look like and everything i yeah. think becca did an incredible job especially with a with a tough book because again you're you're talking about blending these mm -hmm. somewhat disparate genres and again Be becca is key to helping that feel seamless and intentional as opposed to haphazard and inconsistent, you know, which is the first sign to me that a book has a problem is if things aren't consistent from page to page, because then it just feels like chaos. You don't feel like you're being taken care of. You don't feel like the choices you're reading are definitely choices. It feels more like accidents, you know? Yeah. And that's not a comforting way as a reader to trust, I think. So that's the number one thing I look for as a reader and as a creator is consistency. And I have to say, I think Black Cloak is incredibly professional looking. It's a beautiful book. Uh, it absolutely is. I mean, and it goes a compliment to a lot over there. Look at that second panel with the crack punch. Yeah. I Gorgeous. mean, the placement, you know, tech, uh, I spoke to Janice Chang, salute, you know, legend. And she, you know, always talking about, you know, the placement, lettering placement, you yeah. know, don't disturb the art. Yeah. And, I, you know, and, and, and you know, but they're doing it right here, killing it. Doesn't disturb the art, beautifully placed, yeah. you know, where it's coming from. So, again, attention to detail, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at this. Oh. And I love when you do these multi panels and your splash pages are like, that's been insane. And every time I saw a splash page, it was like, oof, you have to stop and really like soak it in. It that's really great. is eye candy. It really is eye candy. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, yeah. Huge My candy, eyes have massive cavities right now for <laughs> the, the art. This you. this is a great page because this is us really developing the magic for the first time, like what yeah. that's gonna look like in that world, how we were doing that on the gun. And we started with sort of not using it. And we were like, we think we need something like we need a, we need a effect that feels like that can be a touchstone for people, especially because magic and technology are a big part of what this book is talking about it, while not talking about it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this push and pull of a, a society that has got a lot of problems and it's sort of gone all in on magic, which is maybe not the best way to go. So this was the development of that. Um, 
man, when, when she, when she landed here, uh, man, I thought it really sang and we really had it. So I was happy. Wonderful. That is beautiful. I mean, oh, look at those covers. Forever. <laughs> Book one, kiddo. I need, I need to call my LCS like ASAP and make sure this is my <laughs> pull list. Because you ladies are going to be going, you know, be touring on cons. I mean, I know it's early, but are you guys planning on cons and stuff? Um, I'm going to be at Emerald and Chicago and Phoenix. Okay. Uh, that's the only ones I know for sure right now. You got to hit New York, kiddo. You got to hit Rhode Island. Uh, I've, I've done the New York one. I'm just Megacon. waiting. <laughs> yeah. Which one? Megacon? Megacon. Yeah. And I'm after my name. No, no. It's, it's in Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> okay. every, yeah. every time I say Megacon, they're like, you say you have a con? Like, no. It's, <laughs> geez, it's another company. <laughs> yeah. uh, no cons for me, unfortunately. I'm very bad at that. I don't really do cons and signings. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm considering trying to integrate it, but mm, I don't know. It's a question mark. Well, you know, we, this we, is uh, this is certainly the year I'd like to do it um, because of Black Cloak, and we've all I've also got another book creator on coming out the call, but it's it's oh. hard. I have a bad knee, and you know, oh. harassment is a bit of a problem. So oh. you know, yeah. it's good times. Uh, uh, Vendita, well, you need to come out because I know the fans want to show you some love. I know. Love. I have to say, we've gotten such an incredible um, response from fans on the Substack and just people generally being excited about this book. And also I That's got in touch with a bunch of retailers and reviewers like before the holidays, you know, cause we were trying to coordinate all this stuff. And honestly, the love was pretty amazing. It's, it's the first, book. it's the first oh. time I've felt like I really am missing out by cutting myself off from that live portion yeah. of this experience. And yeah, yeah please. It's giving please. me a lot of thought. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's, it was nicer having the Substack this time because usually when you're on a comics project, like you're creating in a vacuum for months on end yeah. <laughs> and it yeah. gets released into the world. And if it's a positive reception, it's like coming out of the house when it's finally summer. But if it's <laughs> negative, it's like, I have to go back into the ground for six more months. <laughs> it's like a groundhog day. Exactly. <laughs> Talk about this cover right here, though. My oh, gosh. Jeff Deekel. <gasps> Jeff Deekel. Oh, I love Jeff Deekel so much. Yeah, this is a tattoo right here. <laughs> yes, yes, I love that. This is gorgeous. My God. <laughs> yeah, he sent me the sketch for this, and I was like, I, I love it so much. And then I sent him... Uh, Meredith had designed that gun and so I sent him the gun thing. I was like when you're doing it, make sure it's not a Ooh. normal gun and he gave it this zhuzh up. It's great. I love oh, it. Hey, a gun maker is not there. Contact Meredith to make your <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris, Christian Ward. Very cool. I think this so one colorful. probably love it. Yeah, of all of them, this one has like the most sort of Blade runner vibes to them. Yes. With that, with that hot oh. pink and that yeah. That claustrophobic feel of the crowd. I love it. Fun. See, that one feels a lot like some of the scenes later, Meredith. Mm -hmm. Like, when yeah, they're on the run and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, man. And that little green guy, man, he little mad shady. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm like, what's going yeah, on? We, here, we, might like, <laughs> we might have to draw that guy in. We might have to draw that guy in because he's got a lot of attitude, whatever. Yeah, yeah. that's a shady looking little more folks. <laughs> I, I, I'm over here later. Is he in the book? I got I to gotta look back now. He look, he look vicious. <laughs> oh, Peach Momoko. She's oh, so great. Gorgeous. Yeah. Gorgeous. I love that she picked up on, I don't know if people know this, but those images are the tattoo symbols from the yeah. book. Uh, so keep an yeah, eye out for that. If you and also with the purple, the use of the, yeah, certain things. Yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> That's it. Dope. Dope, 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 dope. Oh, Oof. Yeah. Tula Latte, my love. My I mean, gosh. I mean, two little Tay and mermaids. How can you go wrong, right? <laughs> oh, my. Two, wow. I mean, yo. Sick. Love it. Absolutely sick. She also really helped us out by offering up completely unprompted her sketch cover for a different variant. Really? Um, so we got a couple different versions out of this gorgeous illustration, which was super fun. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Man, so we did the it. clean dress, and then there's another one that's an incentive cover that's just I don't white. have that it's one. Like the oh, sketch. I gotta find that one. Yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah. That but one and 
Meredith did a incentive cover at the last minute for us and Maddie Adelius and they're all pretty cool. Oh wow, man. This is all coming up on the 11th, folks. That's next week. A few live listeners next week. All right, so you better go to your book shop right now. Go to the LCS. Say, I need this book right now. Black Cloak number one. Not just that, but say, I need it on my pull list so that we yes. can keep getting it month to month. So, what's the deal here, ladies? Uh, is it a limited? How many issues we going? Is it ongoing? What's popping? What's the idea? It's a question mark. It's, it's a question mark. I, we're working on five now. So, you know, we're set. People can feel really confident. We're getting through the first six issues on time. Everything will be great. But the it's a question mark what comes next. I think we have to see how well we do. I think our FOC numbers that Meredith and I got were pretty good. I think they could have been stronger. I think we'll have to see how our issue two does to know how much room we've got, you know, how much more we'll be able to invest and keep going. Um, If people are loving it and it's really got a lot of fans behind it, I mean, we can go for as long as we can go. I mean, that world, there's endless possibilities in there. It's incredibly rich. Um, but I think we have to sort of watch for the fans and see how much they respond to it. You know, yes. you I'm will at fan. least know the murderer. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, the, the oh, arc, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, we totally this arc it wraps itself up, and okay, it, I, well, it should be a very satisfying sort of explosive mm-hmm. ending. It does tease sort of what's yeah. next. And I think the what's next is, do we get to explore that and how much? Um, okay. And I, I hope we will, because, um, you know, it's been... I hope so, too. I'm curious. Now you're killing me. Uh, yeah. Five. It's... I'm, I'm going to be waiting months. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a I nice might... little playground we built Maybe here. I can slip you some digital copies. Or... Oh, <laughs> my God. Yeah, yeah. Feed my vice, please, please. <laughs> Maybe I need some, some black coke right now, son. Please. It is true know. because you've read like 90 pages. So yeah, you've read about half. Yeah. That's I'm pretty, digging it. I'm telling you, you really got me into it. I really care about the characters, what's going on, and I'm seeing the shadiness and who I'm like trying to guess. And I'm like, okay, I'm being thrown off here. Very good. Very good on you. <laughs> <laughs> naughty, naughty. <laughs> Love it. Love it. This is from Miss Comics, folks. I mean, you know, you can check out Miss Comics, you know, see where, where it's going to be at your favorite retailer as well. Ask for it if they don't carry it. If they don't carry it, they're nuts. You need to get yourself in a shop. Right? Yes. Really. And if you have a really great shop, about 50 shops got cool little um, swag packages that they requested uh, that are signed, very cool posters of that character, Rena, that um, what? that shows up later. Um, yeah, signed oh. posters. If you go to my Twitter account, you can see one of the shop's posted it and there's some vinyl huh. black cloak stickers and stuff very cool stuff really? so if hey. your shop i know shops are running some contests and giveaways and stuff so if you have a really great shop that's sort of like engaged um maybe ask them if they've got any and maybe you can pick up some free stuff oh i know who to ask thank you i got two <laughs> by me so one of them better feed my vice <laughs> i'm doing it you ladies are just amazing flowers time just thank you thank you guys for sharing your 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 entertainment with us, your your visions, your your wonderful minds, your stories. I, as a fan, definitely appreciate the heck out of y'all. You know, keep going. Oh, much you. love, y'all. For real, thank, y'all. You so you thank, you so thank you so much. Thank you so much, y'all. So, poor creators like this, folks, it's very important, man. They're kicking ass and they be, I'm digging it. This is amazing stories, all right? And this is how easy, all right? You could check out Curry's website, got everything there on all the links, you know, 1979semifinalist.com. And, and of course, you can follow my wife's Tumble. Check out all that dope art. Dopeness. McLaren.tumblr.com. The links are below so you can click away, all right? Like George Jessen, you know, get those fingers swollen as you click in and observe and look. All the wonderful stuff they put together. And, of course, support the wonderful label that's producing, putting out this wonderful book, you know, Image Comics. Check out everything they got. Not just, you know, what these ladies are producing, but all the amazing books that they got. All right, because that's what it is. Shout out to Kat for helping to put this together. Much love. I appreciate you. And again, so you already said Joe Cons. Kelly ain't doing none. All right, she's depriving us of her of her presence for now. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Uh, she's, but, she's cultivating an air of mystique that I can I mean, He's the I, new Wolverine I, from back yeah. in the day, right? The mystery of <laughs> Kelly Thompson. <laughs> I do have to say, I was at dinner with a comics friend and he was begging me because a bunch of image people were around. This was this was before the pandemic. And like he's like, you should, he's like, all these people were like, can I come to dinner and meet Kelly? And he's like, no. And then I was like, <laughs> and then I was like the problem is I've built up some, this, this mystery now that like there's no way to go anything but down. I was like, meeting me at this point for anyone has been yeah. overhyped. It's a complete disappointment. And he looked at me and he goes, unfortunately, I think you're right. I was like, I oh, know I'm right. Damn. Oh, wow. Damn. No, you, you got to right. commit at this point. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I think I'd have to look like Bruce Wayne at this point for it to, <laughs> hype, to be worth it. If I you know what? That'd it. be funny that she wears a hood at all conventions when she picks yeah. up her head. She's still wearing a mask because like, yeah, you're yeah. never going to see the real people. <laughs> yeah, that be your good. spiel. Go, go ahead with a mask at every convention. Yeah, you can pull a whole dead mouse Trump. thing. No one ever yeah, has lady. to Ooh, yes. Can I, I mean, I would say I'd wear like a Daft Punk, like a motorcycle helmet, but can Yo, you imagine how yes, odd yeah. Do it, it, do it, do it. At a convention, who is Kelly there are much less odd things. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see this, yo. The great oh. mystery. Paparazzi would go nuts. Who is Kelly Thompson? <laughs> I gotta, we got to do this, all right? Hey, right. Meredith knows the secret, but you know, and then everybody's gonna try to go at Meredith and get those. Yo, we'll give you a hundred thousand if you reveal her appearance. <laughs> I mean, wait a minute. If someone wants to give me a hundred thousand dollars, yes, I will show her. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait, motherfuckers, wait. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you, Lee. I love it. See, this is why I love this energy. This is great energy, folks. You know, you're gonna get this same wonderful energy as you read these wonderful books by them, all right? And so, with that, I want to take much more of their time because you think it's been amazing. Check out all their amazing works. You know what it is. Check out my extended family. Dropping shows all week. No Price Podcast. Old Timers uh, comic book show. Even today, an amazing uh, uh, podcast outside the panels. Another amazing female creator doing her thing. Rocking in the indie world. You know what I mean? Because we're celebrating everybody, baby. That's what it is. Your comics is for everyone. Make sure you support your LCSs, your creators, everybody. Your favorite books. All right, because if you don't support them, we won't see them no more. So show the love. Spend that money, baby. Thank you for tuning in to the Comic Series Podcast with Al Mega. Whoa! Thank you for listening to the Comic Crusaders Podcast. If you like the content, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, please visit ComicCrusaders.com and our extended podcast family over at UndercoverCapes.com. And also, make sure to download the Comic Crusaders app on the Google Play Store today. 